This is a short webinar. We um, call this as Project Management Education Series. We have been bringing many such webinars, mostly uh, seeing um, what's good for the industry and uh, the key aspects of project management brought in nutshell. So um, this one uh, webinar is one of my favorites. As you see here, six benefits of using software project uh, software for project scheduling and tracking. Sure, uh, <coughs> sure thing for you that post this session, you will start thinking of uh, using them. Either if you've already been using them, you may start thinking of how to maximize or optimize using the software. All right then, uh, thank you all once again for being here today. And uh, the next two hours is going to be mostly talking about this. And I have uh, some small uh, exercises plan which I will show you time and again. So uh, if you have any difficulty in uh, listening to me or uh, any issue with audio, do not hesitate to tell me or Anita either through chat or you may actually unmute yourself and say so. All right, uh, let's move on to the next slide uh, which is syllabus and course structure. What Anita has just mentioned is uh, two hours so I would like to break it down a little more as you see here. The three things that we'll be talking about today, from the past and the present. I always uh, like talking about uh, history, you know, some bit of history is always nice. Uh, so you would always see some something related to the history. So that's what I have brought in today. Uh, there's an opportunity that I could talk something about from the past. So there is some section which talks about uh, the schedule, you know, from the past and from the history. And then uh, we will... Uh, then talk about some list of common project scheduling mistakes. Uh, scheduling more often is thought about uh, as a plan, which is not so. Plan is actually uh, comprising of many small plans or, inter or let's say a plan of different knowledge areas that we talk about. So there is a plan for communication, there is a plan for uh, scope, there is a plan for quality, there is a plan for uh, stakeholders, there is a plan for procurement which is purchase and there is a plan for a human re uh, uh, relation which is HR and there is a plan for time which is nothing but schedule. More often they will interchangeably use, you know, when your boss comes and says, hey, have you made the plan? Maybe he is referring to a schedule. So most likely in an industry it is accepted uh, at least largely the plan is equal to schedule. But I would like to defer that because Schedule is a part of the entire gamut of project management. Having said that, schedule is one of the key aspects of project management because it talks about time, it talks about delivery. So if you're not on time, you lose money. That's about it. So we will talk about some of them. Um, I have some 10 common project scheduling mistakes that I'll talk about. And then finally, we'll conclude with uh, six benefits of using project software, um, uh, such as project uh, MS project. I have an uh, open source also and uh, which I will uh, show you uh, uh, at the end which is known as Project Lever. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's begin uh, talking about the next. Yes, uh, I did get a chat message from Chandra. Yes, Chandra, you're right. Uh, MPP is MPP is Microsoft Project uh, Extension dot MPP just like your DOC is an extension uh, which is he says that it is a scheduling tool not a planning tool that's correct it is a scheduling tool not a planning tool and that's why we are not calling this uh, webinar as a planning uh, a tool we are talking about scheduling in particular okay let's move on so we have questions uh, keep your questions till then and uh, I will take them one by one if you remember any questions during the session if you have any questions put that on the chat so uh, the last session I would go through uh, all the questions and try to answer as many as possible. All right, uh, from the past and the present this is my favorite section. You know, I have never liked history when I was in college uh, school days. You know, uh, the reason being I found it very difficult to remember the dates. But I realize now that history is uh, uh, something that I always love, and uh, I realize that I have got the basic uh, characteristics of asking why do you need certain things. So, and uh, that actually helped me, that quest of why was a project schedule required? 
why it is known as schedule what is a project why how does the term called project originate i always have that question that actually helps me uh, understand the uh, topic better so that's why i have uh, a small section of uh, this study today all right what you see out there is a small uh, case study not case study i would say a snapshot of uh, a tank you know water tank water accumulation tank called purumamila the tank's name is purumamila tank in kadapa district kadapa district is a district in today's andhra pradesh andhra pradesh in india there is a district called uh, Kadap, uh, the district called Kadapa, and in that uh, there's a tank by name Purumamila tank. This tank uh, is uh, uh, was used or designed, uh, constructed for uh, primarily for the drinking water purpose. And what's interesting about this is it was constructed uh, very early, uh, uh, earliest form. It was one of the earliest irrigation dams that was constructed by the Vijayanagar Empires, uh, which is uh, way back about 500 years ago. That's a long, long time. And they were, uh, I would say that they were one of the pioneers. They have constructed many such irrigation tanks. Uh, I have uh, a bunch of uh, lists with, uh, with the government authorities, which I have received from uh, them. It's about at least about 40 such tanks they have constructed. So I think they realized uh, uh, water is an essential commodity for our livelihood. If you look at ancient civilization, it was always situated in the river banks. Now river banks is a good thing uh, to be, but the problem is you cannot keep uh, expanding uh, in that area. So there is a time when you have to go to other areas such as uh, where you don't have river. So. Vijayanagar dynasty realized that we have to do some interconnection, the networking of rivers. And that's how they built canals, they built irrigation uh, tanks, and they built uh, intermediate lakes, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at this particular uh, tank, which is Puruma Villa. It was constructed by Bukka I, uh, his son, Bhaskara uh, Bhavadura, who was the prince of Bukka. He constructed this in 1369. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's quite some time ago. It's about 650 years ago, this man, visionary guy called Bhaskara, he actually constructed this tank uh, about 650 years ago. And he was very uh, particular that um, whatever he has used to construct the technique or process or procedure, anything, he wanted that to be followed by the entire dynasty uh, to uh, uh, post his uh, era. And uh, in order to do that, what he did is he made sure that these uh, learnings are captured somewhere. So here is some relevant portion of this inscription, which was dated back 1369. You still find this tablet there. It is with the archaeological department of India. So one of the tank, and this is a snippet that I am reading out. One of the tank constructed according to the requirement of the Shastra, I, which is Prince Bukka shall in this edict describe 12 constituents for the benefit of future king which means he made something like your 10 commandments he made 12 commandments you could say 12 rules uh, which he thought he believed that uh, if adopted to build uh, irrigation tanks they it would sustain for longer duration and of course give uh, benefit to the society and to the future kings so let's take a look at few of those inscriptions here I am bringing this to uh, make you uh, aware that schedule is not new. This is not new. Schedule, the usage of schedule has been there since the earliest known civilization. So I just got some evidence. I am just bringing it here. All right. The first one said, the king endowed with the righteousness and desires of acquiring wealth or fame. This is one of the key driving force, you know, the business case, the driving uh, force. And uh, he mentioned a Brahmin learned in hydrology, also known as Pata Shastra. Somebody who is an hydro, uh, hydrology, let's say hydraulics engineer in today's world, what we call hydraulics engineer, was needed at that time, and uh, this was identified. And a resource, typically uh, here in this case, in our scenario, would be a technical guy, who would be a techie. This guy is a technology guy who knows about hydrology, which is knows about the water, also known as Pata Shastra. This is one of the requirement that is mentioned in those twelve uh, units. And he says, ground adjourned with hard clay, which is one of the key requirement to build the bed of the uh, tank. 
and he says a river conveying sweet water that's nice thing don't build a water tank where you have samudra which is uh, an ocean because that's salty and sweet water is what is talking about fresh water rivers and uh, that's one of the prerequisite for constructing a dam and he says hill parts in contact with or should flow by the side or between the hill that's a great stuff most of your uh, dams are actually if you look at uh, the biggest largest case studies is actually between the hills there are dams are constructed between the hills if you look at the uh, irakut dam which is in sambalpur in orissa it is 5 km stretch for long very long duration that is the longest uh, dam constructed uh, in india 5 km stretch and that was again in between the hills so these uh, today's technology or uh, requirements have not changed if you notice uh, 650 years ago they all lessons learned you know these are all part of lessons learned that we talk about in project management all right then he says between those two portions that like those portions of hill a dam of compact stone wall not long but firm this is one of the requirement is states and he says fruit giving land outside that is below the tank that's irrigation we talking about today if you look at uh, the dams one of the key objective of dams is not only water supply is also uh, proper irrigation and also ensure that the floods don't uh, spoil the crop that's uh, been fundamental reason all the time so it i talk about fertility to fertile land out there bed is uh, extensive and deep one of the need because water accumulation would be more and obviously it can be uh, used to uh, disper- distribute amongst a larger area query containing straight and long stone a great requirement we talking about resources resources availability what we talk about uh, construction material so construction material assume that if there is a dam uh, which is thought about a site construction but the construction material has to be purchased from 2000 km or procured from 2000 km away from the site then there is a problem there is a problem in terms of getting the raw material so this is always uh, one of the issues and this was identified even by them which means they did acknowledge the need of resources such as stone here and some qualifications such as it should be straight and long and should be near where it should be near which also says the time required you know a part of schedule in is a duration of completion of a project you need to consider the delay the logistics also so this is one of the requirement he stated among the 12 the neighboring fields rich with fruit and level and then a water course such as uh, sluice gates and uh, uh, the position of the mountain itself and finally a gang of men skilled in the art of it, its construction which means you would need the resources the human resources labor resources who are good at construction which means we are again talking about resources here which becomes a part of a schedule if you have a poor resource who do not have enough skill to construct a dam then there is a problem there is a learning curve so the time required to complete that may be delayed with a 6 month uh, uh, target you can complete a project uh, with maybe uh, an average skill guy worker however the same project with a fresh uh, grad so fresh graduate out of college will take longer duration maybe 9 months or maybe 12 months because they have a learning curve so schedule has to be considered Uh, uh keeping these things in mind so that was an inscription of uh 12 and uh, interestingly he also mentioned a few other points uh, which also part of for again 1000 labor uh, laborers work in the construction of the dam every day the resource that is talking about is mentioned is 1000 so surely he may have a date in mind he may be thinking that a reservoir must complete in let's say 3 months or say 6 months or say 2 years or 5 years but in order to do that he says i require 1000 laborers working at the construction site of the tank uh, tank and dam every day now that time is talking about schedule again so the these two are marked in red because we are talking about resource requirement which becomes a part of your schedule when you make a schedule it cannot be independent of number of resources it cannot be independent of resources consumed that's why uh, he also stated that importance then 100 carts were employed for masonry work of sluice and wall and its tank was completed in 2 years that's awesome in 2 years the tank was completed uh, which used 1000 laborers working at the construction site every day and used 
वन हंड्रेड कार्ड दो स्क्रीन एंड फोर क्लिप्स एंड ऑल अदर ट्रक्स इक्विपमेंट नथिंग वो दे The only uh, source was human driving the cart or bullock carts driving the cart. So the, they were very key aspect. If I go back uh, thinking about the uh, olden days, he who owned the most uh, number of carts was the rich guy, which makes a lot of sense. He was holding logistics uh, under his control. So 100 carts was employed. So for the masonry work, transferring material from one location to another location within the location to different location, and the duration that is mentioned here is two years. Interestingly, this tank that I am talking about, it, it is still in use, which is seven miles long and two and a half miles broad. Ladies and gentlemen, this was done 650 years ago. It's not uh, a small feat. It is a great achievement done. And uh, uh, Vijayanagar Empire is known to construct a lot of irrigation uh, projects like that. They have been pioneers in doing irrigation projects. If you Google it out, you will find a PDF document by Government of India. who hydrology department which lists out all these ancient some of them are closed but this the one which i'm talking about is still there the inscription of tablet is still there so that's what uh, was uh, awesome you know that's why i like history uh, this uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel we want to see what was done in the past and learn from them all right and this one consisted of four natural hills connected by three short earthen dam riveted with the kadapa stone blocks Kadapa is an area which is also known for the stone. What you see out here is uh, for the uh, drain, rainwater drain that we also call a storm water drain. Just opposite your house, you would find some of the cities, uh, especially in Bangalore, it is noticeable. You would find a typical type of stone which is used for excess water drainage, rainwater drainage. Now that is uh, very commonly used by Kadapa stone. So Kadapa was is known for uh, stone. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of uh, uh, the dam construction out there in kadapa during the vijayanagara empire and the feeder river that they had mentioned is uh, maldevi river which was the key uh, source for all this so they built canals from river to uh, uh, flowing all way through the civilization and they built reservoirs where the which qualified these 12 points and uh, Uh, typically for uh, inhabitants there or settlement so that they can expand the uh, empire to uh, uh, to greater area so for for that to happen you need water water is essential part of our life and we all know that uh, without water we cannot survive more than 5 days with food we can survive up to 21 days but without water it's difficult impossible to survive so i think they realized then they also found out why it is so important so now talking about the case uh, study just to sum up uh, the emphasize here is resources used 1000 labor per day and then bullock carts 100 bullock carts and then querying stone the distance between them so these are important aspect which goes as a part of your input or uh, this goes as a part of your schedule and that's why it is so important to uh, learn from the past as well let's you can look at modern definition what does a schedule mean a schedule is a plan carrying out process or a procedure giving a list of intended intended events and times the source is oxford dictionary i am not taking this from any project management uh, body of knowledge this comes out straight from oxford dictionary which says it is a plan for carrying out processes or procedure giving list of intended events and times that's what a schedule in today's definition as per oxford says so going back to its origin as i said you know i always have the quest why do we call this as schedule why not medieval why not something else why not uh, ragu why not something else so these are the quest that i always happen uh, to ponder and i start seeking the quest and that's how i get some answers which helps me understand this better origin of this word goes back the schedule origin of schedule goes back to late middle english in the sense the scroll s c r o w l scroll which also is known as explanatory note or appendix it is from an old french called schedule it's a old french word schedule which uh, also was used in latin known as schedula slip of paper which is nothing but it is a small piece of paper a schedule origins back to a word called schedula or schedule which says the meaning of slip of paper that's as simple as that 
and Greek also use this word called skene. It is paperless leaf. It's a paper again where something was written, some list of events were written, to-do list that we talk about. So that was in earlier days considered as schedule. So this word, the schedule, S-E-H-E-D-U-L-E, -E, that word, word dates back in mid-19th century, which uh, was started being used as a formal official word in English as well. So there is a, <clears throat> if you, in essence, it's a list of events, you know, it's a list of events or activities or, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, a kind of uh, scroll which you written on a piece of a scroll. That's how it started off and the, every word, you know, uh, gets evolved over time and uh, business conditions changes, business times changes and meanings changes and something new comes up. So that's why uh, you would see that. The latest form that you see in today's world is uh, in terms of Gantt chart. What you see out there, schedule or uh, project schedule, sometimes people refer to project plan they typically look like a Gantt chart. Now what is a Gantt chart? A Gantt chart is a bar chart developed by Henry Gantt in 1861 uh, to 1919, that's his uh, time. During that time he actually invented this bar chart and uh, it was named uh, to honor him called Gantt chart. His name was Henry Gantt. So the Gantt chart that you see, the bar horizontal chart that you see in today's world is actually originated from Gantt. And uh, in the First World War, it was very much used uh, 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 for the war planning and stuff like that. And uh, in 1910s, it was also used later uh, post-World War for industrial revolution. So what you see bar chart today is actually, uh, it's an illustration of start and finish date of terminal elements uh, and summary elements of a project. So Gantt chart is nothing but a list of uh, or graphical looking chart of uh, which is in horizontal uh, x-axis you would see activities spanned across time. That's what Gantt chart illustrates which means activity A or work package A, a deliverable let's say for example. A begins on 1st of August and completes on 30th of August. Activity B begins on some time and ends at some time. Now these were the list of graphical looking stuff which he gave uh, as a chart and that was named as Gantt chart. So terminal ele elements also as uh, I said would be known as uh, work breakdown structure WBS or it could also be a task slash activity. This was uh, the first major uh, application of Gantt chart was done by United States during the World War I at the instigation of General William Kozia. So he was the guy who said let's use the Gantt chart. Looks like it's going to be beneficial because we have a war planned in uh, some area such as Germany or some other area and uh, we would need to know what are my preparation. In order to do that what all I need to do. So he used this Gantt chart to do sequence his activities, not sequence sorry, I take back my word, to list his activity uh, and um, plan for a warfare. So how does, uh, what does a modern uh, project schedule comprise of? Nothing has changed over time. Activity list is nothing but your, what's, what needs to be done to complete a work package for example. Okay, uh, typically there are tasks that you talk in today's world, task, you know, uh, review a document or design uh, <clears throat> the drawing, uh, approve, uh, get an approval or submit, so all these are tasks. So a typical uh, today's modern work schedule would contain activity listing. Activity dependency, I have put this in red and there's a reason for that. The reason is simple, Gantt chart proposed that activities are there to be accomplished in order to complete the project. But what he did not uh, bring to highlight is activities are dependent on each other. So the dependency part was missing and that's what, what you see out here is activity dependencies. So the modern uh, complex, if you look at complex business scenarios, the modern project managers thought this isn't enough. Gantt chart is good, but then we need something else. So that's when you have dependencies coming in. And uh, in the 60s, 1960s, uh, two important things came in. Uh, one from the Naval Department of Government of the United States and one from DuPont, a company. Uh, very popular company. So these two actually proposed 
uh, activity sequencing what we call a network diagram which is nothing but activity dependency and other uh, company proposed uh, the critical path which is a very very important concept for project managers critical path is the the let's say tool or a, a single tool which helps project manager to juggle around which also gives you an insight on end date of the project and many more activity resources Gantt chart did not consider that as well. So the Gantt chart that you see in Microsoft project is actually not the original Gantt chart. It has been changed over time because you have resources attached to that and you have dependencies, uh, activity sequencing attached to that. And finally, activity duration. The typical schedule in today's business comprises of tasks or activity, which is nothing but activity list, and their dependency. Activity A must be done before the activity B. Activity B must be done before the activity C. Activity C can be done parallel to activity D. That's an dependency we're talking about. And uh, activity resources, uh, who will be working on this particular activity? How many people will be working? What are their names? What material will I be using for this activity? Example, the Kadpa, wa, kadpa uh, Reservoir. How many stone blocks do I need to get from query? How much will a one stone block cost me? How much does it cost for me to transport from the query to the uh, site, the construction site? How much does it cost? Cost and the cost uh, is significant because the uh, the uh, the block cut, the resources, typically the animals have to be fed well, and the guy who brings it, he has to be fed well or maybe paid well also. So he does it for his livelihood. So activity duration. Uh, the next thing after the activity resources. So resources are of two types, you know, one is consumed and one is being used. So human resources have been used and uh, there are some uh, consumables in construction which also become, uh, forms the cost of the project. And then activity duration, which is typically uh, when you start the project or activity and when you complete it. Typically it is uh, having a unit of days, hours, weeks and so on, so forth, depending on the project. So this is, uh, the next slide uh, would depict or show you what we're talking about. So this is a modern schedule looking uh, what, uh, like a bar chart, if you notice here. So these are the bar chart here. Let me bring up annotation, okay, there you go. So this is the bar chart on the right side. The one which I have highlighted in yellow is a bar chart, all right. And what you see there in the red point, the arrow marks, the red and blue arrow marks, they are nothing but dependencies, activity sequencing. Let's take a look at activity B, which is having a predecessor of task 1, which is start here 1. So that is why you see activity B on this line begins on Monday, blue. So this is beginning on one day because there is a predecessor here. Okay, it takes them uh, 5.3 days, which goes to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and spills over to the next days. So, this is the duration here, so start date and then end date. And what you see out here is activity, there's a list of activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So these are all activities and originally the Gantt chart is only these activities and mapped to the duration, that's about it. It did not have the dependencies. So dependencies were uh, evolved uh, about 40 years ago uh, when uh, these two companies that I talked about uh, came with the need. So Microsoft project is one such tool which shows you the Gantt chart. We still call it the Gantt chart because uh, we would like to honor the person who actually uh, invented the style of uh, charting visually your project, all right? So the red one indicates the critical part method, CPM. So CPM was actually done by uh, the DuPont. So I'm, sometimes I get confused, was it DuPont or the, or the US Navy? I am, uh, think it's mostly the DuPont company. So these guys were the one who said, Critical path is the longest duration path, uh, which is red in color in this case, or what you see out red in color, which means activity A, activity C, activity E, and activity G. These are all on the critical path, and if there is a delay in activity A, C, E, and G, the project will get delayed. That's what critical path talks about. So critical path means that longest duration which is the earliest completion of the project. If someone goes on leave and is on the critical path, there's a problem. Your project may get delayed. That's what it shows. So the blue in color is not in the critical path, but they are all required to be completed in the project. 
okay and the line dropping line there that you see out there is um, dependency so there are activity dependencies so if you notice there is uh, the component surfaces task or activity and there is an activity dependency here if you, if you notice here and there is a duration here and what is not here is resources that is not been shown here but you add resources why because resources will tell you when you can complete this project now more often I have seen in my consulting experience and my uh, project experiences mostly the duration is uh, told 10 days 5 days without considering resources now that's uh, some rule that we use uh, that's a problem you know uh, if if I say 10 days I may have something in mind saying that I will use 3 resources for uh, construction for let's say doing a task A so if I don't get the 3 resource we already know that I'm already off because my expectation uh, was to uh, get three resources and I've given estimate based on that. If I don't get three resources, there's a problem. So resource is actually one of the important aspects. All right, so that, that was uh, about uh, quickly about uh, schedule. Just to sum up, we just finished first section. Uh, the section was mostly about history. I love history, as I said, and uh, you've noticed schedules are originating from the need. The invention has been there because there was always a business need. There was a business need. There was always a confusion. To-do list may not have been very helpful all the time. And that's how the schedule is over the time evolved. And what today the schedule you see is actually originated way back thousands and thousands of years ago. All right. Now, the next important section is uh, before we get into the benefits of the scheduling software, we just saw an output of that. Before I talk about that, let's talk about common problems in scheduling, common mistakes. So list of common project scheduling mistakes, which is very important. If I don't know where I would be doing a mistake, there is a very less likelihood that I will plug in the leak in the design. All right. Let's take a look at that. There's no sequence as such. Uh, the list, this is actually 10 lists that I have uh, Mm, come up with with my experience in the past uh, in projects I have spent all my life in projects all my life in projects I spent mostly in working in different kind of projects now I have worked in software project I have worked in engineering project I worked with construction project I worked in uh, 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 a movie making project also I have been consulting there so uh, there's been a lot of different varied kind of projects and BPO transitioning projects. So I, I think it's, it's really nice, nice to uh, be in uh, doing a different uh, uh, variants of projects. And trust me, they're all the same problems everywhere. It's not different, you know. The project in uh, a VPO industry is not different from the challenges that you have in a movie making industry. So it's, it's almost the same. So these uh, 10 Common mistakes that I have done is generic mistakes. So what you see out there is one among them. So the first mistake that often I have seen in schedule is timeline commitments are made very, very early stage in the project life cycle, which means the project begins and it is handed over to the project manager and the sponsor says, okay, guys, you've got a new project. So when do you complete? And the project manager says, I'll get back to you and makes a firm commitment in two days saying that I'll complete the project in six months. This is a very common thing I have been seeing. Things have not really improved when it comes to project management in many companies. Yes, there has been drastic improvement, uh, at least in uh, uh, from what uh, uh, few reports that I had seen in a uh, few surveys that was conducted a uh, couple of uh, decades ago. But then there is a lot of scope of improvement. So timeline commitments are made very early stage in the project. So that is one of the problems. So commitments are made very early in the project. Uh, that is uh, the reason why we end up uh, having a bad schedule in place. So you make a, a timeline which is realistically not possible. And if you change that, surely you cannot achieve it. There is always delay. There is the first one. Second one, incomplete work by down structure. Second common problem. And uh, this is often leading to missing work packages. And more often, there's a lot of debate later on with the customer saying that uh, this is change, you have to pay as extra, or this will take more time, and the blame game begins. No, it was your fault. You will say, no, I have given a 200-page document to read. It was very clearly stated there, and customer says, I don't have time to read 200-page document, and so on and so forth. And it continues. The fundamental problem, we have one webinar that we have uh, commonly um, doing. Uh, you may uh, attend that. Uh, the importance of work background structure there. So incomplete work background structure means 
you're missing some uh, work package which means you're missing an activity which means you're not estimating for that either resources or uh, the duration which means some sometime down the lane somebody will show up and say hey guys you missed that so that's a problem you know so that's uh, something uh, you have to uh, consider an incomplete WBS can often lead to bad schedule that's one of the key uh, problems you know all right estimates are made on work package mostly on work package and not on uh, activities what I'm trying to highlight is at a high level so the boss comes and says when you complete this you go and say yeah about two months in two days you say you make a commitment of two uh, months and they are all estimate based on high level so if you want to use a schedule software for a scheduling if you do these mistakes no software will help you no software on earth will help you do any of the intelligent analysis because estimation giving a good estimate is your job not the software job but if you give a good estimate the software will tell you if you continue like this you will delay the project by three days that is the benefit of software the software itself has got no brains software is not intelligent like us so the duration estimate is uh, one of the problems uh, in that schedule where you make at a high level all right then the next one is resource estimation often missed before the duration estimates are prepared I have a classical example with the construction company that I've been uh, consulting. What happened? I um, there was a small part of construction to be done, and uh, estimation was to be made. So obviously, I'm not the right person because I'm not a civil engineer. So I had to find a resource, typically a civil engineer, who would estimate the duration required to complete that piece of work. So when um, I uh, asked him how much time will this take, he said 10 days. I made a note 10 days. Often what we do is good, great 10 days and we go ahead. There is a point that we are missing. We should also ask the person, you have given me 10 days keeping how many resources in mind. So then I told him, so you are saying 10 days even if I give you two resource or even one resource or half a resource. For that he yelled, no, 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 Raghu, my 10 days is based on three resource of this skill set, two resource of that skill set and this much material. Now his estimate of duration was depending on resource, how much resource you are going to get. So the first question, if somebody asked me when can you complete this, I would say how much resource are you going to give me. If I don't get that answer, I would rather say, okay, with two resource I can complete in two days, with ten resource I can complete in one day, or with uh, half a resource I will do uh, this job in uh, 25 days. So resource estimation is one of the key aspects for duration estimate. More often we miss doing this. We jump to a duration estimate and we assume the skill sets of people go to be the same, which will not be true in a real sense. All right, that's one and never relook at the schedule, you know, multiple iterations. You make a good looking Gantt chart and uh, yell at everyone and say yay we've done a great looking colorful chart look at the bar chart it's so colorful there's black blue red so many colors are out there all that is good but have you re have you done multiple iterations have you looked upon can i improve something else can i put more resource here i will give an example again i was having a discussion on project scheduling where um, the managing director came in and said uh, to the team, I was, a cons I was consulting there, it was just my first assignment uh, in that uh, company. He walked in and said, guys, I've got a new project, you guys have to complete in 20 days. And he, uh, he said, are you guys okay with that? How about that? Everyone there nodded their head with reluctantly, but they all said in chorus, yes. Alright, so MD listened what he wanted to listen and he went out of the room. After that uh, instance, I asked the team, hey guys, uh, do you think it's doable in 20 days? All of them, again in chorus, told me, no way. Everyone said that. Why? So then I asked them, so why did you say yes to your boss? All of them said, Raghu, he's our boss, we cannot say no to him. I laughed at them. I said, awesome, good. So you have actually made him happy today. My question to you all is, after 20 days, if you don't, which you are saying, if you don't complete the project, do you think his happiness will continue after 20 days? Most unlikely. 
you will surely go and tell them some reason, cock and bull story, and saying that is there. There is all reasons are all genuine. You are all genuine reason. But you started off in the wrong footing. Why did you commit? Make a commitment that you will give. And then you know that there is a resource constraint there. There is a cash flow issue with the organization. The labor are not so easy to get. So keeping all these constraints in mind, resources in mind, how can you just make a commitment on that? And I went to the MD and said, hey, uh, you have uh, given this uh, 20 days. What's the basis of doing that? Do you have any historical information? What's your basis? I would like to know. For, the, for that, MD said, Raghu, simple. My basis is, if I tell them 20 days, they will complete in six months. That's a uh, confidence that uh, the team had given to the guy, to the MD. I went back and told the team, hey guys, this is the confidence you've earned with your boss, saying that whatever we say, don't believe us. No? Instead, I w if I were to be in your position, I said I would have said, give us some time, let me come back to you. And that's what happened with these guys. So uh, they were taught using how to use project scheduling tool and uh, some of the project planning uh, practices. They did that. And uh, the next time another project came up, uh, MD walked in the same way and said, hey guys, I have a project. This time he did not say 20 days because I was working on the MD, MD also. He said, when do, you com when do you think you can complete this project? The team said, we'll take four days and get back to you. And in these four days, the team worked entirely on uh, a software, scheduling software, and put all their iterations, multiple iterations. They went through multiple iterations. I was not doing anything there at all. I was just looking at them because they were, at, they were all the champs by that time. They did everything and called the MD for a presentation. The MD came in and said, show us. And they used the software to tell the project will end at a particular day. And he said, can we not reduce this? He said, yes, if we give resources on this, 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 we can. He said, how about uh, doing more work, putting more resources in activity B? The guy said, no, that's not on the critical path. That is not going to help. The MD was zapped. And then uh, they said, how about putting more resources here, more resources there, say changing the sequence, all these are multiple iterations. So finally, they arrived at a figure which is more and more realistic. And MD had no other option but to say, yes, I agree with the schedule, let's go with this plan. It is more realistic. That's what a software would actually help. But software also requires some kind of uh, basic uh, uh, project management skills, you know, fundamentals of project must be right. So this was multiple iteration. So don't make, just send it to customer, review this in email. Everyone don't have the software, you see. And everyone don't understand, are not as intelligent as we are. So we have to take them through. So multiple iteration means we may have to take them through, explain them what we're talking about. All right, the next one is um, critical path method was never used. What is the end date of the project? If your boss comes and says, or your client comes and says, when can you complete the project? What will be your basis of saying, when can I complete my project? Surely an Excel sheet is useless there. You will have to go with signs. The science of project management says the critical path will tell you the project completion date. That's, that's a period. That's what you require. So what do you refer to say, when can you complete the project? It is a critical path you will refer to. And critical path is not easy to arrive in Excel. Not possible. There are some project scheduling tools which will help you in doing You can do this manually, of course. But the complication, when the complication increases, then making the schedule becomes more cumbersome. That's why sometimes, sometimes, I would say most of the time I prefer software only. Because I don't want to do the dirty job. Let the tool do it. I will do the intelligent job, take decision based on that. So critical path never used. So if somebody comes and asks me, hey boss, I need leave. I am getting married. I always use this example. And he says, I want a three week vacation. What will be my basis of giving him leave or not? critical path surely. I will have to find out if this guy is on the critical path. If he is, then I will have to request him not to go for three weeks, go for two weeks or find a replacement for those three weeks. Alright, that was another reason why uh, you prepare poor schedule. Alright, incomplete task list, activity listing. This is one of the common, uh, very, very common problem is they all done at a high level. For example, activity or task, anything that takes time is an activity or task to me. That's how I define an activity. I have seen in schedules saying that get approval from client is one of the item. And they park three days on that or five days on that or sometimes they say one hour, whatever. To me, there are actually two activities. We are missing one activity there. 
get approval from the client is actually comprising of two uh, activity. Activity number one is review the document. Activity number two is approve the document. So review the document is happening by one person. Approve may may not happen by him. So that's the, we are missing the task here completely. One activity is completely missed. If you miss this review the document is very critical activity. You just go to approve and you just say that he is not approved. Approval is just about a minute job, about half a minute job. Approval itself does not take time. What takes time is reviewing, which means if you don't identify this as an activity, incomplete task list that I say, incomplete activity list that I say, is actually resulting here. Many, many times in the schedule that I have seen in uh, real world scenarios, people miss the review document by the customer. So you have to say review document by the customer and the name of the customer is Raghu Raman Kadambi. He will do the review and take his buy-in how much time does he require to complete this review. So that you can follow up with this guy Raghu Raman Kadambi and say hey boss where is my review. If you delay you are my customer if you delay the project get delayed. So if I don't identify this as a task list itself there is a big issue. No project schedule will help to uh, you know bring back things to normal. Activity sequencing not optimized. Sometimes we think some things are having a sequence. Activity B cannot complete until activity or cannot start until activity A is completed. Now this is a dependence. This is also known as hard dependency. Your team and uh, SMEs will sit together and say actually we can start this work even before it is completed. Now this is what is optimization I talk about. Multiple iteration, all part of multiple iteration. So task sequencing, some things can go parallelly. Something must be uh, uh, a predecessor or successor. So these are optimization. So that's what uh, one of the common problem is. Optimization of scheduling has not done sequencing. Estimates are done with the wrong people, often with the wrong people. I was asked uh, uh, by a company's uh, head saying, Raghu, can you make a guess? When can you complete? I said, boss, guess could be costly. Don't, if I make a guess, you go ahead and uh, commit this to the customer and uh, mine is already a guess. And the worst part was I don't belong to that industry. I have never worked with that industry at all. So how do I know that how much time will a particular activity or task take? If you ask me to guess, that's too dangerous. So if I had guessed, if I had guessed, he in fact forced me saying that, can you make a wild guess? I said, wild guess is not a good idea. It is too bad. It is too bad, you know, if I go and make a wild guess to Narendra Modi and say that I have completed, I will be completing this project on so and so date, that can actually cost my job, my life, my career, everything. So if you are not the right people, do not estimate. That's too bad. That's too bad. And finally, scheduling software never used, you know. I uh, I think this is missing in most most of the project. Either they don't use it the right way or they never use it at all. Many places I have seen people using Excel. Excel is an easy to use tool but it does not help in project management. It does not help. Trust me, it does not give you dependencies. It does not give you optimization. It does not give you a forecast. If you complete, if you do the project in this way, when can you complete? It will not give you how much cost has been incurred. It will not give you who's not done the work. It will not give you who will do what and many, many, many more. Yes, if it is a week's project, if it is a month old project, okay, you can get away with the Excel sheet. But then if it is complicated, too bad. Never use Excel. Excel are used very commonly uh, by even complicated projects which is goes beyond a year. That's too bad. Never use that. I never use Excel for that at all. When it comes to project management, I hate using Excel because it does not give me the immense power or capability to do some, to take some important decisions in project management. So this is what uh, scheduling software uh, uh, I emphasize among the 10 mistakes that I commonly pinpoint to um, uh, uh, say uh, project scheduling. Uh, one of the things that I have commonly seen is scheduling software not used or not used the right way. So if, you, if you're if you using it, if you're not using the right way, get yourself trained. Spend some time and money on uh, learning that, all right? We have a program on this. Uh, I think Anita would brief you on that. The next month is a web-based again, uh, how to use a particular software. So we can talk to her if you're interested. All right, so that is about uh, 10 uh, 
points that I would say common mistakes. So if you notice these common mistakes that I'm talking about, some of them actually can be addressed easily by using a software. Let me now talk about um, benefits of using software for project scheduling. I can go in length talking about benefits, but um, I have uh, classified into six major benefits that you can uh, get out of project scheduling software and tracking. So I would like to just talk about that. And then I would show you the tool itself and uh, show you something that can actually be very beneficial to you. All right, so uh, use project uh, scheduling software for project planning, executing, controlling, and closing. There you go. All the four groups is there where you plan using the software, you execute using the software, you control the project using the software, you close using the software. Now that's one of the advantages. There are some questions which often uh, uh, will be addressed by this tool, you know, software, any software that you use. When your boss comes and says, Hello Raghu, when will you complete this project? What will be my basis of answering him? As I said, critical path. Critical path by definition is the longest duration path of the project. Which means the red ones, if you remember, recall, red ones that I had uh, shown in the Gantt chart, that is a critical path. Which means even if you had completed the ones which is colored in blue, it's of no use. The project will not get completed until the activities on the red gets completed. So critical path is one of the benefit uh, that you can get analysis, critical path analysis using a scheduling software. Another question that you always would have, uh, what will resource one be working on 20th July 2015? That's about 15 days from now or about, uh, I think about three days from now or four days from now, 11th, right? That's too uh, near, but generally, this is a difficult question to answer. Trust me, people will dodge this question. I asked this question to one of the purchase procurement person in the engineering project. I asked him, uh, he was actually very adamant saying that, ah, what software, what meeting, these are all time waste. We have done projects for so many years. What do you know about project? What do you know about our industry? All these things he said, because I was from an IT background, he knew it. And he was always using that against uh, me. Uh, I did tell him that I, though I spend most my most of my time in IT, I have also I am also from an engineering background. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I have spent considerable time in engineering uh, industry, hardcore SME. So I am aware of projects. So yes, I have, have spent most time in uh, IT, but then um, that should not be uh, the reason for me for you not to listen to me. Anyway, here is what happened. The dialogue was this. In the previous project that uh, he had undertaken took about six months okay? and uh, he was not willing to give me a commitment on when he can complete the project. Just generally it was a first round of discussion. I asked him when will he complete the project. He said six months. I said can you give me a date. He said six months from now. I said no give me a date. I need a commitment from you. Just give me a date. He was very hesitant to give me a date. I told all right no problem. Uh, tell me. Uh, when will you complete activity number 10? He said uh, in three months. I said no. Give me time and date. He said how do I know? Three months down the line what I will be doing. That was, uh, 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 that was uh, something which stumped him itself. He got caught. He got, was trapped in my question. I said this is the problem. You don't want to use a software tool which means you are pretty much depending on uh, the time, you know, pretty much depending on the fate, pretty much depending on the chance to complete your project successfully. And I told him, I use this word in Hindi, this is known as Ram Barose project management. Which means, you really don't know, you don't have window of visibility of two weeks from now, three weeks from now, what are you going to do in project? You don't know which resource is going to be working during which week on what assignment, what task, how can you control it if you don't have that visibility. So more often schedules are made at a high level, that's the biggest problem, never do that. So break down, don't miss activities and put the resource and say, hey Ramesh, hey Raghu, you will be working on this project on day 11 and day 12. And you will be working between 3 to 5, 4 to 5. How can you give this uh, confident answer? Definitely manual work is going to be uh, difficult, so that's where uh, the software tool becomes handy there. So, resource. so he was he was trapped there and uh, uh, 
uh, I, ha I asked a few more questions and finally he said I have no answer and got very angry and went. He came back again of course and asked me the same question. If I put more resources can I complete this project early? So that's a, that's a, a typical situation where we don't have visibility of when who will be doing what. They can use software there. But uh, they can be useful in planning, execution and control. During, while the project is on, somebody comes and asks you, hey, um, there's a problem here, I don't have en enough information from the client. The client has not reverted back on uh, the approvals, so what do I do? Can I delay the task then? My answer would cannot be uh, an escalation. My answer is, let me have a look at my schedule. So I have to look at my schedule and see if this is on the network path. If it is on a network path, then I would have to escalate this and say, boss, you guys are not going to deliver this. This is already network network path. If it delays, the project gets delayed. I am issuing a change request of a new project completion baseline. You will have to approve it or extend the baseline or immediately finish the work. These three, these questions can be answered if you have a software in, in hand and you know how to use it. Can I approve leave for resource too? I give this famous example, uh, my favorite also. Uh, my team member comes and says, hey, I'm getting married. Can I take leave for three weeks? I say, uh, hang on, let me have a look at the critical path. I look at the critical path and say, sorry boss, you're on the critical path. I will not give you leave, so you cannot marry. Now, uh, surely, uh, uh, he, will, he will not be with me any longer. So, uh, if I have to make this decision, how do I do that? I can do that only if I have a tool and know I know what is the impact if this person does not work for those three weeks? And what are my other alternates? Who else can I draw from? Where I can juggle my resources? So this information is very helpful when I use um, uh, software. Another question. With this rate, if I continue working like this, when, I, when will I complete my project? Which means project forecasting. Trust me, nobody knows this. I can bet. At least 90% 90, 90 of people do not know at this rate, if I continue, when will I complete the project? You can still make a guess. Yeah, we, we seem to be on time. Yeah, we will be okay. Don't worry, we'll put extra stream, extra people. Yeah, don't worry. But still, forecasting is a problem. So forecasting is very important aspect of the project. If you don't know how much you're going to be delayed, what will you control? There is no way you can control. You would not even know that you're delaying. You will still show picture completion, 90% complete, 10% complete, 100% complete, and percentage complete is useless to me. It's just waste of time. So, rate forecasting. That is uh, a difficult question to answer and you cannot do that by means of a manual calculation or even guess. Guess is a bad thing. You would have to use some software which will help you there. Then, if give, with the given resources, uh, when can I complete my project? My boss comes and says, hey, a new project is coming up, Raghu, I want you to release all the resources. So, uh, finish the project early. So I would have to go back and see if I put more resources, can I complete the project uh, before the time so that I can release my resources. Again, softwares are handy here. If the, this task is delayed, will I have a, an overall impact of my delivery date in the project? Very good uh, point. I was uh, doing a consulting for a um, software company. Uh, not this, let me give an example, different example. I was doing a, a, a consulting for a, uh, an organization that was primarily into engineering services. So one day, uh, while I was, uh, uh, that was on a Monday I think, so what happened was the engineer came and said, hey, hey uh, Raghu, there's a problem. The previously uh, scheduled task for the week, last week, is not complete yet and it will take two more days to complete. And today I am supposed to be starting another task, what shall I do? I am, I am very worried that project may get delayed. I said, wait a minute, let me have a look at my schedule. I opened my Microsoft project, that is the tool that I normally use, opened that and saw uh, that um, this particular task that's supposed to be starting on Monday was not on the critical path. And uh, it had what we call as float, flag time, which means I can delay this task. I told him, uh, don't worry, continue with what you were doing. Let us delay the scheduled task, which is on Monday, to three more days. Do not worry, I said. He got, he got worried. How could you say that, Raghu? It is sequentially, that's the next thing that needs to be done. And as per the schedule, you have said it should start on Monday. I am not starting on Monday. You are still saying that it, uh, it won't impact the schedule. I said, yes, I am saying that. Don't worry. I am a magician. I know magic. Even if you delay for three days, don't worry. It is taken care. What was my basis of saying that? 
My basis was float calculation, what we call as float, F-L-O-A-T or S-L-A-C-Q slack. It is nothing but the duration that you can delay any activity or task without delaying the end date of the project. That is manually calculated. If you want, you can do that. If not, software gives you. It gives you what we call a slack time, which means you can delay this task instead of starting on Monday. I could have started this on Thursday yet not impact the schedule. So that's an advantage again of using a software. Uh, actually, Float is the asset. Float is an asset to project manager. I use this juggling for all my projects. Every day morning, I run my critical path analysis and see if something is changed. And if change, I say, hey, you, 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 stop working on that. Come here. Hey, you, 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 stop working there. Come here. All this juggling act based on my delays that is happening in the project, I do this juggling based on the float. So sometimes I have to keep up my time. And I do that by means of critical path and float calculation. Now, can I assign additional work for resource 3? I've been seeing that uh, resource 3 is working on something. And uh, I go to, uh, I need to know, I have some extra work that has come up. Uh, some change has been come up by customer request. Now I want someone to do that analysis. Uh, that is not a part of my schedule, so what do I do? So I will have to locate who is little free, relatively free on the day. So that's also doable uh, if uh, I have a software. You see, we are talking about team size a little more than what one or one or two member. One or two member, you can actually, you don't need a software to do anything. One or two member team, you don't need a software at all, as a matter of fact. You are you're typically working on a small project. Next. What are my schedule variants at any point in time? Am I delayed in the project? Is there a cost overrun happening? If I continue work like this, what will be my total cost overrun? I was working in a software uh, project, a non-shore offshore model, wherein um, uh, I was handling the offshore uh, delivery for one of the product. I, uh, uh, one of my peers, not my peers, peer but senior, uh, came uh, and we were just discussing about schedule and he said, Raghu, schedule is our bullshit, he said. Uh, project schedules are made just to eyewash the customers and none of, none of us are serious. And he was a certified uh, uh, person also. I was disappointed. I said, look, uh, anyone else says I agree. They don't know about project management. But you've been there, you've certified, you've trained people. You should not be saying this. He said, no, what is Raghu? Uh, it is uh, things change over time and uh, and uh, we make a lot of assumption when we make a project schedule and it doesn't work. We don't get the data and so on, blah, 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 blah. I told him, sorry, I beg to differ. I can demonstrate to you that I have been successfully using this. So I took him to my desk and showed him my, the project that I was handling and that project status was up to date la as of last week. So I would do reporting once in a week. So as of last week, I was ahead of schedule by two days. That kind of visibility I had. So if I don't have a visibility, how would I control the project? No, uh, I um, I consider Rita Mulke as my group. So uh, she always says, you know, who's controlling you? Are you controlling the project or the project is controlling you? I think that's a very nice way to uh, say about project management. So I don't want the project to control me. I would like to control my project, which means I want to be controlling them rather than they controlling me. In order to do that, I need visibility. I need to know what is the current state of affair, the realistic affair. So the schedule variance that I'm talking about, I don't do that at the end of the project. I have to, it's an ongoing work. Every day on day, I should know if I continue working like this, will I complete my project? Will I delay? Will I complete? Will I be ahead? Will I be complete? Now that's when I can raise the red flags to the right appropriate people, escalate them and say, boss, I'm making noise because you guys are not delivering. Okay, that's what we're talking about. And how do I prepare different report for different stakeholder? There's often misconception that project manager's job is to do reporting. Sorry, I don't necessarily agree. Yes, it is an important function, but we don't spend time on that. That's not a good idea at all. One of my colleagues uh, in, in an organization would spend two days in uh, metrics dashboard reporting. I would be surprised and ask her, why do you spend so much time, two days? And they, that reason uh, she would give all in all the meetings that uh, because of so much of uh, reporting, so much to prepare, so much report and so on and so forth. I was, I said, look, I think I can help you. I am good at automation. I do a lot of automation because I don't like doing donkey's job because I'm not a donkey, obviously. I'm a human being. I'm better than a donkey. So um, I have actually uh, sat with her and she said, no, it's difficult, wagera, wagera. Then I said, show me what's your report. I saw that and said, look, I can give you a solution quickly. Ten minutes, you'll be done. 
instead of spending two days every week you spend just about five minutes every day every week so how about that are you interested i can do it free of cost i'll support you and uh, she said no Raghu, don't worry i don't want to trouble you i said no why it's okay i'm offering my help and she said no no i don't want i said i insist and she said no Raghu, i don't want you to do this because i want to spend i want to waste two days of my everyday time some people do that in purpose there are no 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 technology will help them no softwares will help them i said okay that's the purpose then all right then you're good to go i have nothing uh, sorry about that i had to barge I barge in and uh, proposed uh, to support to help you. I'm sorry about that. So, um, different report, you know. I, I would not like to spend more time. Here is where the tool is also handy. So, if you have a good plan in place or schedule in place, you have baseline it and you are regularly feeding the data back from the uh, field as to what is the actual work, you can generate report in seconds. Don't spend hours, years to do report. I hate reporting. But my reports are one of the best in the industry. My bosses love my report. I give them only that report that they want. And I spend a very, very, very minimal time in the day. Maximum five minutes is what I spend because I like automation and I like to ease my job as much as possible. In project also, I take, I spend most time in decisions, decision, making decisions rather than reporting. So, how do I prepare different report for different stakeholder? I use software to do the job. For example, I would like to say 100% completed job. Bingo, seconds I get a report. Who does what when? Bingo, seconds I get a report. What are the flipping tasks? Bingo, I get a report. What are the overrun tasks? Bingo, I get a report. What are the scheduled flipping tasks? Over, who? Wow. Project summary report? Wow. Bingo, I get everything on tip of a uh, tongue. So, how does it help? The software. Software helps you provided you give data. If you put garbage inside the software, you'll get garbage out. So the data should be, you should have a sanity of data. You have to have process in place, checks in place, so that you get the right data. But it is definitely better than doing nothing. And then another question that if I put more resources on task 15, can I bring the project back to track? Yes, these questions can be handled uh, if you have some good tool in place. Uh, some Any software tool of your convenience, anything that is good. So that's, uh, these are few questions that actually help you uh, answer uh, some of your project related questions. These are the ones which uh, uh, is the key uh, of today's deliverable. Six benefits of using a software for project scheduling and tracking. The two aspects if you notice schedule and track. So first is uh, again there is no sequence here. There is no first top six or something like that. It's just six benefits uh, irrespective of the sequence. So develop schedule. So when you're in the planning phase one of the benefits of uh, using a software is it helps you sequence things much better. You can do multiple iteration, drag, drop, pull these things, put more resources and do a lot of stuff. So developing schedule is an uh, iterative process. You can do that well if you have the software in place. So one of the key benefits of using a software is developing a good schedule, which is used, developing a schedule is a planning process. So in the planning, you will use this tool. That's why in the bracket, what you see out there is uh, talking about planning group. This can be used in planning group. All right, next one, work assignment. So in the planning, you can actually assign, for example, you can assign a particular activity or task to Raghu. Or let's say, you don't know Raghu is going to be working on this. You're not sure who's going to be working on this. No problem. The tools is uh, intelligent enough to give you pool of resources. Let's say you can say uh, five engineers make a pool of resources of five engineers and assign this work to five engineers, that group, engineer group or something like that, which has five people. Later on, you can actually make more uh, detailed uh, plan saying that Raghu, Ram, Rahim, Ramesh, whoever will be working on that. So work assignment is easier here. Most Gantt charts that I have seen, the work assignment is missing. If you do not assign tasks to people, you will not get a proper schedule. Because time is taken by resources. Human beings take time, whether it is logistics, whether it is this, and they take time to do a certain activity. So if you do not assign resources, it is useless. It is just a piece of dumb piece of document which has to be thrown, never waste time on those schedules. So work assignment, which is used in planning phase, which is used in execution, monitoring, and control groups as well. And then another benefit of using a software uh, is reporting. I just talked in length about reports. 
it uh, you should not spend days and hours in reporting that's bad very bad I, I would say spend most time in change control spend most time in risk management or spend most time in uh, taking some project related decisions so reporting must be easier you should be able to uh, do quick analysis and communicate properly but there are tools which gives you wonderful reports which uh, could be in a PDF format or an Excel format or a JPEG format, whichever format of your uh, choice. So we have a lot of lovely tools out there. Some of them uh, are paid, some are uh, tools, some of them are uh, free also. I'll, I'll show in the next slide about that. Fourth benefit of using a software is improved project status or forecast capability. This is important in monitoring and control group. My experience of project management has always been uh, saying me that you have to be good at planning. If you're not good at planning, you must be good at monitoring and control. So if you don't plan well, the next thing that will happen, you have to do, if you still have to bring things to top, uh, track is you have to be able to control the changes, control or monitor the project and control them from deviations. So actually that's uh, a uh, one of the key aspects if you don't have planning done properly. And normally this actually is a cri crisis uh, situation. If you don't do planning properly, uh, you end up typically on um, uh, crisis management rather than project management. I uh, completely would say, I still remember, I was project uh, manager for three projects in a, in a company and I had my colleague who was handling one project. So one day during one of those reporting time, uh, he had he happened to look at my uh, charts and all were green. It was all as of that day it was green. And he gave a sigh <sighs> and said, I wish I had simple projects like you. My project is complicated. That's why it is delaying. Your projects are all simple. You are delivering on time. Uh, for a moment I said, yeah, you are right and just turned around myself. Started staring at my monitor and started thinking, is it true what he just said? I just realized that he gave me a compliment. I immediately turned around and shook his hand and said, hey, thank you very much for the compliment. He could never relate to what I'm saying. And he was wondering why did I, he actually, if you look at it, he sarcastically told that I've got easy projects. So uh, that's what one, one can actually look at. But instead of me shouting at him, I said, thank you for the compliment. Here is what my uh, thing was. He actually gave me a compliment saying that, hey, Raghu, uh, in my case, the project is controlling me, that's why there are delays. In your case, you are controlling the project and that's why there are no delays, all are green, all are on time, on schedule, on uh, cost. So that was a great compliment that I could get. So as a project manager, I don't want to fight with people saying that, what do you know about project management? I have done so much of risk management, I have done so much of planning, I have taken teams by and I have actually done a lot of uh, stakeholder analysis. All this is useless not required. What matters is the result. If the other person feels that my project is simple, my job as a project manager is done, which means I have made it look easy. I am a great project manager. I consider myself as a great project manager if somebody comes and says, oh, Raghu, your project did not have any problem at all. It was very smooth, sailing, easy, yeah, wo. I would say thank you very much guys for the compliment because I made it look easy. I did great project management. I have ensure that my team goes well within time. They don't have a problem. I have fought with anyone uh, required to make things back to track. My team goes home early and everyone who, who looks into my project, great results and they steal. Your project was easy. Thank you very much for the compliment. So how does that possible? How is it possible? I do good planning and I control the project. So project controlling can be possible only if I have visibility on project. I am sure many, many project managers are great project managers if they have just visibility on the project. If I know a particular task will be delayed three weeks from now, will I not do something now? All of us will have, we have, we have the intelligence to do that. In order to take the decision, we need some basic data. And that data is what I am talking about. So improved project status, the percentage complete is useless. If you go and ask how much percentage complete, everyone will say 30%. You tell them to deliver, they would actually say, sorry, but it's not in a deliverable form. Why? Because they may actually not have started the work also. So the percentage complete is an arbitrary number. Without a signs of arriving percentage complete, it is useless. What I meant by that is you estimate 10 days on a task and you have completed so far 
five days on the task and you estimate five more is required which means you are you can now say five days is completed out of 10 days so you can say safely 50 percent of your work is completed and let the software do that you don't enter the percentage i never do that mistake percentage entry by us is bad unless there is a science behind calculation of the percentage fifth benefit of using the software is improved project control as i said you get you can now say okay ragu you stop doing work you come and work on this hey ram you stop doing work you come and do work on this what is this controlling i'm trying to control because there are delays in other parts of the project but i'm taking ragu and ram here because i know that those activities can be delayed those can be deferred this is now critical to me so that's a juggling act i can do i have to do every day on a daily basis and that happens in monitoring and control the question here is how do I know that there's a delay going to happen? How do I know that Raghu and Ram is available? I have no clue at all that they are actually in the non-critical tasks. That's when this tool also helps. That's the fifth benefit. Then finally, another important benefit that you get is easier consolidated lessons learned for cost and schedule. End of the project, if the project goes for six months, nobody on earth knows where things went, how many iterations happened, how many baselines were changed, which estimation went wrong, whether in terms of cost, whether in terms of schedule, which resource delayed on a particular task so that next time you want to ensure that that resource you estimate a little higher than other person and so on and so forth. All this lesson is often missed. The lessons learned is just a theory which is kept, uh, which is shown to the people. But the fact is, we as human being have uh, seen in many places including me I am also an example I have also learned over time so lessons learned is the only thing that we do which means we the only thing that we do in our life is never learn any lessons we like reinventing wheels every time we say yay I am the first guy to do this project but the fact was somebody is already done already done I could have taken all the estimates from a previous project I could have taken the resource estimates I could have taken uh, a buy-in from my customer saying or my boss saying last time this year we did not complete the project with this resource this time same project is coming with the same constraint it is not possible how will you give this confirmed uh, and confident answer you can't do that if you don't have historical information and historical information needs some capture you can use the same tool just have a Microsoft project or some other uh, file kept there as a historical information and keep revisiting them before you start a project. So that's what easier consolidation lessons learned. And lessons learned don't happen over time. You can every week on week you can capture notes. I normally do that in Excel based stuff. So what I do is I use MS project. MS project for example uh, is a license based project. Everyone cannot use that. That's money. So I had designed a MS project in Excel, kind of a project reporting, where from a project I would do all the planning and scheduling and I would every week send an Excel sheet to all the individuals, tell them to select their initial task against, against their initial report then. Only three things that I would ask. Actual work this week, remaining work this week, notes. Only these three fields I would capture. And trust me, initially there were uh, resistance, but Later on, they loved it because of the predictability. My team members would go home early. It was always well controlled. And, the, my, and my bosses and my customer initially, even if they are skeptical about our delivery, sooner they will say, oh, if it is done by them, they are the best. If it is done by Raghu, oh, Raghu has done it, no problem, then it's fine. There have been, I have, I have heard people saying that, ah, this is absurd. Uh, this, I don't agree with this estimate or I don't agree with this end date. Uh, who did, who did this? Raghu has done it. Ah, okay then it may be right. So I have earned this over time. It doesn't happen. Magic doesn't happen over time. There have been there have been times where I have failed miserably. So I have learned all those things from past few previous projects. Some places I have learned from my own project and fed the lesson back. So this software will actually sometimes help you in consolidation lessons learned also. So if you notice, the six benefits that we are talking about is in planning, execution, monitoring, control and closing as well. So you can also use an initiation if you have a lessons learned. So that even before the start of the project, you can say this is realistically not possible. In these kind of projects, our organization is never delivered on time. So let us not make over commitment to the customer. Be very careful. Watch out, boss. At least you have raised the red flags. That's most important. All right. That was uh, uh, six benefits. 
just to iterate developing schedule, you use uh, one of the benefits, assigning work to individuals, reporting, improved project status and forecasting capabilities, and improved project control as a reassigning work and so on and so forth, and uh, easier consolidation of lessons learned. I would like to now switch to a software. There are some softwares that uh, you can use. So um, you can uh, see this here. Let's talk one by one. I will have the slide here and move to a small example that I have created. OK. I am just bringing up a notepad to type in something. All right. My favorite tools are here. OK. Font. Let me increase the font a bit more. This. OK, yes. All right. First tool very commonly used is MICRO, SOFT, ERO. Microsoft Project, any version is OK. I have done extensive work in 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013 I have not worked that much. And uh, in this, there are two flavors that uh, is commonly used, standard and uh, professional. OK? And of course, there is something called enterprise, also known as EPM, Enterprise uh, Project Management. I worked uh, in a few companies because it's expensive affair. I worked in a few companies. So I mostly worked with professional edition. Then this is paid. Uh, if you don't have the budget for that, never mind. There is open source, open source called project, L-I-B-R-E. It's a single word, L-I-B-R-E. This is a lookalike of MS project, exactly lookalike replica of MS project. So if you cannot afford Microsoft project, no problem. We have an open source. It almost does all functionality of at least up to 2003 which is still good enough. I can still work on MS Project 2003 and get away with great project management. And then you have uh, some other uh, project management such as uh, uh, Primavera. And I think it's now not sold, uh, not so popular because Oracle took over. I don't know whether license is still available. You will see it used in mostly Middle East and developed economies. And uh, there are other uh, paid now uh, cloud-based CLOUD, cloud-based uh, CLO, CLOUD, cloud-based solutions and all that. So there are many there, you know, subscription-based you can use. So whichever. So for my demonstration purpose, I would like to show you some glimpses of project management using Microsoft Project. So if you know one tool, every tool is similar. So it's, it's not a rocket science. So let me go back to uh, the first thing, developing schedule. OK, how do I do that in Microsoft Project? I will not give you a training today on using Microsoft Project, because that would take me uh, at least eight hours to tell you basics of project management uh, or using project scheduling using Microsoft Project. There is a schedule that's upcoming, which is a paid webinar, which uh, is uh, scheduled in the month of July, mm, mid of July, uh, not mid of July, mid of August, sorry. So Anita will share the e an email with the details later on. So let me show you what I'm talking about, how these benefits can be translated, OK? The first one I was talking about was with respect to schedule planning. So let's see if I have this one, OK? There's a project. What you see out here, interface is known as Microsoft Project. And this is very old version, very, very old version, Project 2003. As I said, I can still do project management using Project 2003. It is a very stable version. Now it stops supporting that. I have a trial copy which I am showing to you because I had purchased a book uh, which uh, had CD along with it. So this is a trial copy that I have. So what you see out here is name of the project. Okay, this is a Wingtip Toys commercial project. This is a, an advertisement project where what you see out here is a, a activity or task that we talked about: log footage, record, uh, rough narration paper uh, edit uh, footage, rough cut edit, fine cut edit, old formal approval showing, record final narration. I have added two more in informed client, prepare document for sensor board. Now this is a typical 15 tasks uh, project. And um, on the right side, I'm just dragging this here, on the right side that you see is known as Gantt chart. 
See here, Gantt chart. I would like to show you a small magic here. I would come some, my boss comes and says, when will you complete the project? So I told you that my project completion is based on, see here, start and finish, 13th of October. If I start the project on 3rd of August, this project called Wing Tip Toy gets completed by 13th of October. So easily I can tell. All I had to do was list the activities, give the duration here of each activity, and give the resources assigned them. I have resources here that I can assign. And bingo! I get, if I start the project on 3rd, I finish the project on 13th of October. If my client says, oh, no, 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 I want you to start the project now, no problem. I will show you in the planning phase itself. If I start the project instead of 3rd of August, if I start the project, let's say, on 2nd of September, or let's say July, let's take 15th July, okay? 15th J-U, sorry, J-U-L-Y, okay? Let's see the magic now. Ah, uh, bingo, guys, a lot of changes that has happened. See, it has changed. It is a sea of change. I had to just change the start date of the project and I get a magic saying that, wow, I can complete the project. Now, I go back and say, no, no, uh, I don't have resources. It's practically not possible. I can best start my work on 1st of October. Let's see what happens now. 24 September was earlier date. Ah, oh, there you go, guys, I'm a magician. I told you I'm a magician. So it's so easy for me to forecast or uh, to say when is my planned end date depending on my start date. Well, okay, that was uh, here. But then what is the basis? How does the tool decide that? I told you about critical path. I will show you that as well. Go to Gantt chart wizard. Right click on the uh, thing, Gantt chart wizard. Select critical path and say next, resources and dates is okay. Say yes, just default and say format it. Finished. There you go, guys. Everything that is there in the red is on the critical path. That means that any problem, anything that gets delayed here on any of these tasks that I am selecting, the entire project gets delayed. And my project completion is based on the critical path. There are other views. What you see is known as Gantt chart view. This is known as Gantt chart. On the left side you have the task, on the right side you have a Gantt chart. Okay? And if you notice, if you put your cursor on the top of the Gantt chart, you see summary there, which says start 1st of October, finish 11th of December. And that's black in color. That's known as summary task, which is in this case project name itself. And you also see that Patrika is there. Now I will do some juggling. Instead of uh, one week, I would like to say it takes two weeks. I extend this, now there you go guys, just one task I extended to 2.2 weeks and the entire project from 1st December went to 21st December. And the lines which is grayed here that you see out here, S and S, which is Saturday and Sunday. This is coming from what we say is working time. See here, project standard calendar is used where Saturday and Sunday is a holiday. If I have a software tool, I can actually say that, you know what, Saturday is a working day. So I will say, uh, it is no longer, uh, let's say half a day or let's say this is the working time and say, okay, there you go guys. Do you see the grade ones there? It is no longer on Saturday, it is just Sunday. Now you see end date of the project, bingo, not 21st December, it is 7th December. Why? Because my working day calendar has changed. So that's the power of using a software where you can actually do a lot of project management, real project management if you have enough information. I can actually have multiple calendars. I can have a Dubai calendar. I can have a resource working in Australia different calendar. I can have resource wise calendar. I can have machine calendar. I can have my corporate calendar. I can have my uh, factory calendar and so on and uh, the choices are unlimited. You need to know how to use them. You need to be a good project manager and somebody who has the patience to learn the software as well. The first and foremost to use this tool is you have to be a good project manager. And you should know as a project manager what is important to me. So now what you see just is a small sample example. Is it good enough? Let's see something else now. View. There is multiple view as I see here. Network diagram. There you go guys. See here. 
all this is a network diagram which is nothing but activity listing it also gives you detailed start date end date finish date and so on so forth is this good enough yes we'll see some more magic here let's go to resource sheet awesome do you see here the standard rates are given for each individual and uh, overtime rates are given cost per usage is given and the calendars are defined here and these resources have been tied to the gantt chart let me show you in the planning stage go to view gantt chart view and view select the table called cost there you go guys magic you see how much is the total cost the cost of the commercial that is advertisement is $25,201 rupee and 30 201.33 dollars sorry and currently there is nothing been baseline will not worry about that the total cost this is the line you want to see look at the work package level what is the cost now you can actually see if there is a work package level log footage did we exceed or did we do under budget record narration did we exceed or we do under budget so the total cost is also here is that good enough i will show you one more magic view and say instead of cost select schedule these are ready made tables which is already there schedule hey guy is magic notice the last two lines inform client it should have started on 1st of october and got completed on 2nd of october prepare document should have got started on 1st of october got completed on 12th of october now the last line the two line talks about free slack or total slack which says i can delay the activity number 15 inform client by 55.33 days which means instead of starting on 1st of october i can actually start this task of inform client on 4th of december wow that's the power of a software but that gives you an advantage of delaying a task without delaying the end date of the project because there is a slack whereas all this you don't see any wiggle room there is no wiggle room which means none of these tasks from 2 to 14 can be delayed there are zero delays that you can do however you can delay our uh, activity number 15 and 16 by 55 and 47 days respectively plus you have late start and late finish which means you can instead of starting on 4th of october 4th of december this was this is how i had answered the engineer saying that don't worry we can delay the task after three days you can start that there is not going to be affecting the schedule my basis of saying that was i came and look at the free slack in my schedule that's how i arrived it is that good enough no not yet the magic yet to come and guys this is just 2003 and 2007 10 13 has got awesome more features i will go to reports and say summary go to overview click on that and click on project summary ah there is a magic here see the magic is done now my schedule is done dates baseline start 1st of october 7th of december is there a variation not yet because i have not baseline the project yet so you have duration here 53 days and you have work here and you have cost so total cost of the project is 25.21 so 25 this becomes your plan this is one of the example of summary project summary it will tell you the health of a project at any given time let's take a look at assignment there you go guys who does what when this is an awesome report that i give to my uh, team member see here john ganio works on 110 on activity log footage paper edit and record final narration he works from 1 to 10 One one uh, of October ten eight hours on these two activities eight hours on one activity as you see here. So this is schedule. This is his planned time sheet. I would just print out this or send an Excel file or do a PDF file and say, guys, this is your work assignment. You see work assignment an advantage here. Everyone knows what they have to do at what time, which means I have a window of visibility. of everyone here if i go further to page number 3 go to next page down here see here 1410 who is doing what see here 1310 who is doing what 110 who is doing what so every details is all here so with the day wise on which activity that's what the advantage here who does what when then we have what we call as cost report over budget tasks 
Currently, the work is not started, so there is no over budget task. Workload, let's take a look at workload, resource-wise. There you go. John Ganyo on 27-9-2015 has got a 24 hours work. Let's take a look at something else now. I'll go to view, resource graph. And let me go to John Ganyo. And uh, let's look at his resource graph. Here, 1st of December. I need to go to 1st of December. Must be here. October, yes. Let's see the magic here. Okay, okay. Is there something? Okay, let it be here. Okay. If there were any over allocated task, it would show red in color. But before that, let me go and see this over sheet. Ah, there is no one who's been over allocated. And that is why I don't see an over allocation here. Let me do one thing. Let's uh, put one guy overall allocated. Let's say John Ganyo is the person. So I'll go and over allocate work to this guy. So Gantt chart again here. Go to view Gantt chart and change it to entry. And uh, look at the guy John. There you go. I'll expand this a bit more. John is here. So I will do some magic here. Control C and I will add the guy John. Control V and I'll add John here. Control V and I'll add one, one more place John here. Control V and I will change dependencies a bit more here saying that John is in these two activities. So I will say this starts at 6. Now you see what happens. Make some changes here. Let's go and see. Ah, there, guys. You see the magic of the tool. Awesome. The ones they are in red, they are all over allocated resources. John Gaino is saying, hey, guys, you're over allocated me. Now, as a project manager, I the tool says there's a problem, something to do with John and Mary. Can you have a look at that? So indication, see here, it says resource should be leveled, which means they're over allocated. Let me look at the graph, specifically which area. Now I'll go to graph resource graph and then go to December where is it October here yes there you go let's look at John there you go guys magic do you see the magic here awesome John Gaio is working on a day Sunday which is 7th of uh, 11 2015 and he is over allocated by 200% which means he is working his official time is 8 hours but he has been given work for more than eight hours. The tool tells you now, in the planning stage, you're over allocating that guy. So there are two options. You divide this work to someone else, you remove John, or you do resource leveling, which means you spread the work from one day to two days. Instead of 16 hours in one day, you spread it into two days. This is known as resource leveling. So this is also done by the tool. So you can pretty much see, you can do a lot of magic here. And let's go to reporting now. All this was on the planning front, okay? Let's do this magic in the tracking part. I will open an existing uh, project that was done here and uh, show you that. Okay, let's open that. All right, where's that? Mm, give me a second. Okay, okay, there you go. I would like to go with tracking one of the standard uh, report, what is it, tracking, advanced tracking, I'll say just tracking is good enough. Reporting status, that's good enough for me, short film. So let me open this part, there you go guys. I have opened some existing project. Do you see tracking, once the plan was done, it has to be baseline. The tick mark says the project is completed. And on the right side, what you see out here, blue line was the plan and in between center line is the actual progress which says if I just come and put a mouse over here it says task 7th March 2005 and current status is 50% here completed you see here this status complete okay complete percentage is completed by 100% that's why you see uh, a horizontal mark there. Let's take uh, some other thing which is incomplete yet. I will do one thing. Uh, just zoom this so that I have in one 
single window entire project okay there you go so i have zoomed it up let's see there are some project which is not been started yet these are the projects that are not started yet see this project is not started yet so if you look at the project here it is not yet started and now if i go to project and say reports now see the magic overview summary there you go guys the start date is here the duration is this variance is 13 days i ran this report now so as of now the variance is 13 days and look at the cost the variance is 7529 dollars isn't that awesome you know from a tool exactly what reports you would like to say now you say as of now this is what is the situation so baseline now let's take a, take a forecast how does forecast work simple the start date and end date look at the start date and then finish date sorry look at the baseline finish date 28 december 2005 that is a baseline that is a plan so forecast says if you continue work like that you will actually complete the project in 6 january 2006 instead of 20th december 2005 that is a forecast so i ran this report now i can tell that this this project if i continue like this it's going to be delayed and the delay is 13 days now i will say guys ragu you come here you come and work on that you come and work on you 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 move 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 all this can be taken place only when you know what the problem is and then take action on that if you don't know you don't don't have a visibility on the problem it's not possible for you to control all right that's uh, so if you notice this is on the monitoring and control part when the project is ongoing you start keying in the actual data so planning it helps in execution it helps because who does what when that's the report which you will share and they start filling in the form the filling in the actual data it starts coming in you start feeding into the microsoft project you run reports and you will see which is over budget over schedule or the delay schedule take some action monitoring control so single tool that can be used in the entire project management and all this report becomes uh, lessons learned you start sending all this weekly report, weekly uh, graphs and so on. So for there are multiple graphs that you can have on this. So uh, that was uh, a small demo on benefits of using using Microsoft Project. I have installed Project Lever also. Let me show you how it looks like. Project Lever. There you go. It's an open source. You can download the 10 MB file. This looks like Microsoft Project. So. Um, let me open it up. It's an open source. You don't spend a rupee on that. Give me a moment. It's taking a little time to load. Okay, there you go, guys. There, bingo, I have one. So I'll open one project. Okay, let's uh, open the same project. Uh, uh, Ragu webinar. Okay and six benefits okay let's take one of these this supports microsoft project format also it's loading task bingo guys it's almost the same see here it's almost the same and you have uh, some buttons here like histograms you can see on the bottom here this is a resource sheet that you saw and uh, these are some of the other chart, work chart, if you see here. So uh, another benefit of using this, and there are many other such, you know, you have a resource tab and a task tab and a view tab. This is exactly the same replica of 2007, Microsoft Project 2007. And resources, if you look at it, uh, view resources sheet here. There you go, see? It shows you all the stuff here. You can add the type of resources here. The type of resource is here, it is work or material. I think that's the only difference between 2007, you have a type cost. So this is the project lever open project. So uh, uh, I would say you can use this if you don't have a budget for project, MS project. All right, that uh, brings in to the end of this session. Let's see if I'm missing anything. All right, the benefits have talked about I have uh, uh, shown you the demo on uh, this how you can generate reports and how quickly you can take some decisions and uh, yes I'll come to questions yes Chandra give me a moment uh, some FAQs are here so let's do this um, 
let's have q and a session okay let's have a q and a session now uh, with this i uh, conclude my uh, discussion or the presentation part now uh, the q and a session for the q and a session we will use the chat window so you can now start shooting your uh, chat window here and uh, tell me if you have any questions on this so let me see if i can answer them so allow me some time to read and uh, then respond to your question so the time given is uh, uh, about we have about 10 more minutes now so i have uh, taken a little more time in explanation so quickly give me your questions so i have few questions already so let me start answering them in the meanwhile please start shooting questions There is a question from Chandra. What is the basis of identifying critical path? Critical path calculation is uh, a technique by means of, uh, uh, okay, the question is, uh, the question, the three questions he has asked, the first question, on what basis you identify critical path? It is two ways you can do. One is manually calculate or allow the tool to calculate. The critical path is calculated by uh, the tool and there are two techniques. One is known as zero technique the other is known as one technique. I cannot take you through the critical path calculation because that will take me two hours. But uh, I want you to know that each task has got duration and each task has got dependencies. So the critical path would depend on uh, two inputs primarily, the duration of the task and the sequencing. Based on that, you will actually do a technique called forward pass and backward pass and calculate the float. Uh, which is typically first you calculate the uh, critical path which is nothing but the longest path from start to end of the project you will see what are the path identify all the path amongst that path select the path which has got the longest duration path if I have five path in my project project number uh, has got path one part two part three part four part five path three may be 18 weeks path two will be 13 weeks path one will be two weeks path 3 will be uh, 1 week, path 5 will be 25 weeks. So the critical path here will be 25 weeks. This is a longer duration path. This is how you calculate uh, the critical path. Question number 2. For forecasting, we could use earned value technique. Yes, you can use earned value technique if you know how to use earned value technique. You should know what is earned value. Earned value by uh, formula, by definition, it has been invented by Project Management Institute, is the actual amount of work work you have completed as of today. If you don't have a proper scheduling tool and you're not tracking the right things, EVM is useless. And EVM is a project management technique which the organization has to decide. So if you use a software tool and if you're religiously tracking that, MS project for example also give you earned value report. It gives you EVM earned value report which tells you whether you're doing good or bad. If you're not using EVM, that is still okay. You can still go ahead and see your time and cost reports and still see whether you're under budget or over budget without an EVM calculation. Question number three, any project will have contingency percentage during estimation? Well, it's up to you. Estimate, whatever estimate you give, it's up to you. Microsoft project is a dumb tool. If you give 10 days, it will tell you 10 days, when can you complete? If you give 12 days, it will tell you 10 can you complete? The, the estimation technique is a proper project management practice. So how good a project manager you are is the best way would answer that uh, whether you want to take contingency, whether you want to handle risk by means of risk management. I generally don't like buffers. I don't want to have contingencies just arbitrary 10%, 50%. It may not make sense because I really don't know what the risks are. I would rather do a risk management and arrive at the percentage or arrive at the actual uh, amount of worth risk that I have. So you can do a buffer if you want to, but then uh, it is purely type of estimation technique and MS project may not help you there. So whatever value you give, it will just show you as per that value what is an output. So uh, that's uh, three questions. Another question, hmm. okay, Pavan says agile methodology is from one week, two week underway. How does scheduling software help? Well, scheduling software will help in any time. Even if you look at spring 28 days, why can't you schedule for 28 days? Ideally, I look at Agile this way. If you have a two-year project, since you find it difficult to control a two-year project, you break it into small, small projects and you do it the Agile way. So 28 days sprint, there is 28 days of a project, for example, 
you do uh, a project management for 28 days so you can still use the project scheduling so why not you can use this project scheduling tool there also why not all right uh, then there's a question from uh, madhav uh, um, do you have any rule to identify how many activity should be in the critical path uh, no no don't worry about the critical path number of activities any number of activity you can put in your actual project the tool will tell you are there on the critical path the red indication would tell you is there on the critical path any number of activity so it's it's the activity and the duration which actually matters so you may have 100 activities in a path but duration will be very less so that may not necessarily be on the critical path so to answer the question there are no such rules you can give as many activities as you want so there's one more question from anupama which says uh, which tool ms project or primavera is most effective well uh, primavera is definitely good very good because it is robust it is expensive very expensive so cheap and best microsoft project and uh, i have been a poor project manager all this while so i have mostly used ms project and so far i have been uh, considerably uh, successful in using that so i think ms project is decent from a cost standpoint from a functionality standpoint primavera is definitely the best option all right then there's a question from srinivas uh, kanduri uh, how do how do you do resource leveling on the project yes resource leveling typically i gave an example of one resource working on a particular day for 16 hours so which means this guy john requires a resource leveling so there is a tool in this tool there is you have an option called level resources so when you do that what it typically does is to john instead of one day 8 plus 8 16 hours it will spread that activity to two days 8 and 8 so what will happen is your schedule gets elongated so resource leveling typically elongates the schedule that's uh, what happens in stream was your tool will help you there uh there's one more question from manjeet uh, singhil uh, does msp support program management yes why not multiple projects under the program yes you can do that in microsoft project there's an option to insert project so uh, i have done it implemented in many place i was program manager multiple handling multiple projects with common pool of resources so there are uh, situations where you have 10 resources and doing 10 projects 10 different projects let's say and sometimes the common pool of resources have been used in those projects at that time how do you schedule and track the progress of the program all the 10 projects so ms project helps you there also where you can insert project as sub project it is possible to uh, answer your question it is it is doable next question is um, Mm, from Srinivas again, how do uh, resource leveling in the project uh, in Primavera? Um, sorry, I have uh, not done uh, resource leveling in Primavera. Uh, it says yes, it is recommended to change baseline. All right, good. Uh, a question that uh, Pawan, uh, not uh, Pawan, sorry, uh, Srinivas is asking is, if you do a resource leveling in the same example that I gave, it elongates the duration, which means. there is a possibility that your time commitment to the customer may be elongated which means it may be as against your baseline baseline is agreed upon now the question here will the tool allow yes it allows from a project management standpoint what should you be doing ideally it should come from a change control process if this is a situation in a case where john is uh, uh, overloaded on two on an activity for 16 hours i have multiple choices here one i can do resource leveling which will impact my project end date my customer may say no i don't i cannot give you that other option i have is i will look at float in other areas of a project and ask other resources to work on this so that john's work is divided among someone else so that the end date is not affected which means i will attach resources there other option is i put more money and new resource there but there i'll have a cost variance but schedule variance i will be able to stop so this is a uh, case where you have to take a call as a project manager and tell the sponsor that if i do this this is a problem you give me more resources or i have to elongate the schedule or i will have to pay overtime to john because he is working 16 hours we have to compensate it so you these choices come by project manager and they are reflected by the tool 
it could be primavera or ms project so changing the baseline is later changing the baseline is changing the agreement between you and the customer that you cannot do it as a project manager but you can tell these problems then put it to a change control board the change control board will decide whether it should be elongated or we give more resources or we are okay with a delay okay is more of a project management okay then um, microsoft project uh, the joke is the whole world talks about the first thing in microsoft project is uh, you can change baseline 11 times i think that's the biggest joke to me if your project is changing 11 times baseline there is a fundamental problem in doing project management you may not be one of the good project managers there you're saying that my goals are changing 11 times there is a big problem in project management don't baseline unnecessarily because the tool gives you baseline is change baseline should be fixed it should be the plan it is agreed upon don't change it just like that like it's not you know game you know you want to analyze do that for analysis and put to the change control board saying that boss if you put this 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 new scope change the schedule will now change tell me what do you want do you want to continue with the change if yes then elongate the agree for the new dates now i cannot work on the previous date i was doing a consulting for a steel plant erectioning company where uh, the original plan date was 8 months and uh, they took 18 months to complete the joke here was the change happened multiple times they they still stuck to the 8 months and they did not change the schedule they never went back and told the sponsor because of the new changes that you're coming the new dates is having so much of impact we have to put more resources the delay is going to happen on the new dates they never did that and finally end of the project the customer said you guys are incompetent we gave you 8 months you finished in 8 months i would say it's a problem of change control and that should have been highlighted saying that there's a baseline change request we need to change the date of the project 8 months is not no longer holding good from the first change onwards so 11 baselines is useless to me i would say max 1 2 baseline don't more don't go more than that if it's going more than 2 uh, baselines there is a fundamental problem in the way we are managing the project be careful on that all right that's uh, pretty much i think i have taken all the questions here any more questions feel free to ask me now let me look if i have missed any questions mm. yeah chandra asked me this question is mpp a scheduling tool yes it is a scheduling tool only i don't want to consider talking this as uh, this all right i think uh, that's it uh, anita uh, i am done i pass it to you over to you anita thank you very much over to you